Our breaking news this evening is the identity of the man who sent the Obama administration into defend and explain mode this week. His name is Edward Snowden. He's an American former CIA employee and computer technician. Today he came out as the leaker of classified NSA documents that spell out a secret surveillance program. A student gave an on-camera interview to the Guardian newspaper, and we're playing it for you in its entirety. Here's some more of it. Listen. One of the extraordinary parts about this episode is that usually whistleblowers do what they do anonymously and take steps to remain anonymous for as long as they can, which they hope often is forever. You, on the other hand, have decided to do the opposite, which is to declare yourself openly as the person behind these disclosures. Why did you choose to do that? I, I think that the public is owed an explanation of the motivations behind the people who make these disclosures that are outside of the democratic model. When you are subverting the power of government, that, that's a fundamentally dangerous thing to democracy. And if you do that in secret consistently, you know, as the government does uh, when it wants to benefit from a secret action that it took, uh, it'll kind of give its, its officials a mandate to go, hey, you know, tell the press about this thing and that thing so the public is on our side. But they rarely, if ever, do that when an abuse occurs. That falls to uh, individual citizens, but they're typically maligned. You know, it, it becomes a thing of these people are against the country, they're against the government, but I'm not. I'm, I'm no different from anybody else. Uh, I don't have special skills. Uh, I, I'm just another guy who sits there day to day in the office, watches what happening, what's happening, and goes, this is something that's not our place to decide. The public needs to decide whether these programs and policies are right or wrong. And I'm willing to go on the record to defend the authenticity of them and say, I didn't change these. I didn't modify the story. This is the truth. This is what's happening. You should decide whether we need to be doing this. Have you given thought to what it is that the U.S. government's response to your conduct is in terms of what they might say about you, how they might try to depict you, what they might try to do to you? Uh, yeah, I, I could be, you know, rendered by the CIA. I, I could have uh, people come after me or any of their, their third-party partners. Uh, you know, they, they work closely with a number of other nations. Uh, or, you know, they, they could pay off the triads or, you know, any, any of their agents or assets. Uh, We've, we've got a CIA station just up the road in the, the, the consulate here in Hong Kong, uh, and I'm sure they're going to be uh, very busy for the next week. Um, and that's, that's a, a fear I'll live under for the rest of my life, however long that happens to be. You, you can't come forward against the world's most powerful intelligence agencies and uh, be completely free from risk because they're such powerful adversaries that, that no one can meaningfully oppose them. Um, if they want to get you, they'll get you in time. But at the same time, you have to make a determination about what it is that's important to you. And if living, uh, living unfreely but comfortably is something you're willing to accept, and I think many of us are, it's, it's the human nature, uh, you can get up every day, you can go to work, you can collect your, your large paycheck for relatively little work, uh, against the public interest and, and go to sleep at night after watching uh, your shows. But if you realize that that's the world that you helped create and it's going to get worse with the next generation and the next generation who extend the capabilities of this sort of architecture of oppression, uh, you realize that you might be willing to accept any risk and it doesn't matter what the outcome is so long as the public gets to make their own decisions about how that's applied. Why should people care about surveillance? Because even if you're not doing anything wrong, you're being watched and recorded. And the, the storage capability of these systems increases every year consistently by orders of magnitude uh, to where it's getting to the point you don't have to have done anything wrong. You simply have to eventually fall under suspicion from somebody, even by a wrong call. And then they can use the system to go back in time and scrutinize every decision you've ever made every friend you've ever discussed something with and attack you on that basis to sort of derive suspicion from an innocent life and paint anyone in the context of a wrongdoer.